I'd like to talk about the herb Bansha Penelia, which is an herb that moves chi and transforms phlegm. Now we haven't really talked about phlegm before. We've talked about moisture and we've talked about dampness. Moisture being the quality of healthy dampness that's necessary to the earth elements ability to break down substances and transform them into Gucci and transport them as nourishment. And dampness is what happens when that which should have become nourishment has become a burden and is the accumulation of that which should have been transmuted to the next stage. This is the earth dampness. It's the spleen couldn't work it. Ugh. Phlegm is dampness which has bogged down and accumulated to the point of having become an actual obstacle. So when you haven't done your dishes in a little while because of exhaustion and it builds up as dampness, you like, okay, that's dampness. When you actually can't cook because of so many unwashed dishes, this is phlegm. When you have lots of undone laundry accumulated, that's dampness. When you're actually tripping over piles of laundry on your way to the bathroom, that is phlegm. When you have jam that should have made it onto your toast that falls onto the floor, that is dampness. Days later, when it's still there, completely solidified, <laughs> that is phlegm. That is phlegm. So in our body, dampness is more bloated and nauseous and, and heavy kind of feeling. Um, and phlegm is literal phlegm and a kind of muzzy, dull feeling of fullness. Like you don't want to eat even if you're hungry at that point. Um, on a mental level, dampness is a kind of churning in quicksand, whereas phlegm is more like the floundering of a beach whale. And dampness is more overly sympathetic because we're much more merged with others. Whereas phlegm, it's become an obstacle. We're more likely to be obtuse. And because of that mergedness and that sympathy, dampness is liable to make us do a lot of worrying. Tell me about it. Whereas phlegm is more likely to, like the circles get tighter, the circles of worry get tighter and it actually becomes obsession. In a nutshell, I would say dampness is, huh? Whereas phlegm is duh, it's like a deeper level there. Because of its quality of solidification, it can also feel like security and loyalty. There can be a kind of taking comfort that attaches itself to objects, circumstances, political parties, soccer teams. It's like we, we invest materialism with a sense of comfort and a sense of home. That's what I mean by loyalty. Like this is my home, this political party is my home. This position on this issue is my home. This bathrobe is my home. This idea is my home because it can be very conceptual. Phlegm has the tendency to, to create a, a, a conceptual chunks that are very hard to break down and transform. It's a kind of oversimplification that's very nice. 
I mean, it's not nice for anybody else, but it's really nice for us when our earth element is weak and we're having trouble digesting, that is exactly when we are likely to turn our food or food for thought into phlegm rather than nourishment. It's like, it, it just bogs down and we're like, I can't break it down further than this. And then we start having slogans instead of thoughts. And I know we, we know that we never do that. Only other people do that. And anybody who has the same slogans we do is thinking very clearly. <laughs> oh, loyalty. Oh, phlegm. Oh, the fatigue of the mind that creates a home out of positions and ideas and would be very insecure to have to think at a greater level of nuance. There are so many issues in this country that are very, very polarized, just like Bansha Shishintang or, or, or like um, Xiao uh, Chai Hutang. These are two formulas for phlegm and polarization of hot and cold and of left and right, where it seems as though both sides may be oversimplifying a bit. And that if there's going to actually be some kind of solution, both sides are gonna to have to realize that there's a little more nuance to the position. And it's actually not quite that simple. This is what Bon Shah Penelia is all about, is that deep longing for simplicity that is actually the sign of a weak digestive system, a weak earth element. And Bon Shah Penelia, it allows for the movement of chi through the transforming of phlegm, the clearing of the conceptual obstacle by breaking it down into a higher level of nuance. It's like the best kindergarten teacher because a really good kindergarten teacher can take a very complex issue and cut it up like French toast for you so that you can have it in bite-sized pieces and help make something simple for a mind that really needs it simple, but without loss of fidelity. Breast milk is a really great example of this. Is breast milk complex or is breast milk simple? I mean, it, it, it's genius is that it's both, is that it embraces incredible levels of nuance and it's a complete nutrition. But it's so easy that we can understand it, we can take it in, even when our digestive system is weak. Good teachers. It's harder to be a teacher at the beginner level because we need to not say things so simple that they're oversimplified and not true. We need Bon Shah Penelia. We need to take big blocky concepts and be able to chew our food for thought much more thoroughly in order to break it down to the point where we can actually have exchange and movement within ourselves and between our minds and other people's minds. So that's Bon Shah Penelia. <laughs>